The governor heard loud and clear that the number one challenge employers are facing around the state is the issue of talent and finding the right skill set and the, the potential workforce we have. So he created the, the um, Department of Talent and Economic Development. One of those elements is the Talent Investment Agency. Uh, and we are charged with, with really bridging the skills gap and making sure that every person in the state of Michigan knows the kinds of jobs, kinds of opportunities that are available to them. You know, one of the nice things that they've taken on in, uh, in, in your organization is the brokering piece for the, uh, the companies in the state of Michigan to make sure that they get the talent, putting them together. And, uh, you know, with that in mind, uh, David, I think it'd be uh, good to go right to you. Tell me about your skill situation in your plant and probably the dichotomy of a lot of your skilled workers are, are going to be falling off soon. Yeah, absolutely. And first and foremost, you know, we're honored to be a sponsor of this event here today. And, and I'm also proud to be up here talking about growth and, and talent issues versus talking about restructure, resize, and recovery. Um, but, to, but to your question, um, we, we've got an outstanding workforce. Um, we've anticipated what, what our requirements are, that are uh, in, in the marketplace, tried to plan it with the business activities that we have there. But as you mentioned, a considerable amount of our workforce is, is around 55 years of age or older. And therefore, they'll, they'll be retiring in the next 10 years. So there's clearly a talent gap that's there. We're trying to work proactively to identify what do we need to do to work with local universities, um, you know, the, the community colleges, as well as putting our own skill set and training centers in our facilities to address the needs of the future. Yeah, a lot, a lot of work to be done along those lines. Bill Pink, Workforce Development at Grand Rapids Community College. Tell me a little bit about what you folks are doing. Well, one thing that we've done, Chris, is um, we've realized that par partnership is the key. We can't do it without partnerships. We can't do it without collaboration, both in higher ed, with higher ed entities, as well as with industry. And so what we've done, uh, with the help of one of our local West Michigan uh, partners, uh, AutoCam, have developed what we call AMP, AMP, the Advanced Manufacturing Partnership. It's made up of our, our school with uh, several other manufacturing partners where we take students and the students become a, a full-time student at GRCC, but also the companies through that partnership actually hire those students. Basically, it's a classic internship where two days a week those, are, those folks are full-time students at our institution. Three days a week, they're working right there uh, with those uh, companies, full-time, full they're working. And what it does for us is that it gives us a good opportunity to make sure our training and the degree that we're supplying, it's tooling and manufacturing in this case, they leave with an associate's degree, but they also leave uh, in terms of having a job already. What's nice about that and having that associate's degree and working already, not only does the partner have a good uh, pipeline for workforce, but now that student, if they choose to, uh, we can make some paths for them to move on for their four, to their four-year degree at one of our local institutions as well. But the key there is that that uh, manufacturing partner has a good look at who those folks are mm. prior to them coming on full-time in that level of internship. Yeah, it's good because it's interesting. It's not all just about skill sets. Sometimes it's about culture blending. Definitely. And seeing how they're working with you. And along those lines, John, you guys are doing a lot of these types of innovative Yeah, programs. what we're doing is for years we trained our own workers. It takes a very long time to you think about a journey worker job where they're out there on the lines. We used to train them in-house. took about five years, $125,000 of training just to get them to get that journey worker card. And part of the training is they have to work the lines hot. They risk their lives so we can keep the electricity on. One of the things we've done, though, to outsource that is we've worked with community colleges for line worker training, uh, gas training at Oakland, Co Oakland uh, Community College, Lansing Community College for line worker training. We also did something unique where we partnered with our union. Um, the, the thought process was membership is declining. They need revenue. So we said, why don't you add value to us by training the employees on your own dime? And that's what they did. It's called Power for America. Mm -hmm. They built their own facility. We have a contract with them, which is based on performance, based on qualifications. And my belief is, is I think the best training comes from somebody that's done the job and is good at it. And that's who the union's hired. And the response has been fantastic. So it really, I think, is the next generation of how we need to add value to our workforce. And as Mike said earlier, it's not about labor. It's about work. And the best apprentice that you have is somebody that takes real interest in that job and wants to hand it down to somebody else. Yeah, I've always said, if you've got somebody coming to work for you, you've got the wrong person. Exactly. You want them to come to contribute. 
Um, Steph, t t talk a little bit about the strategy in your department, how you're going to accomplish this. Yeah, we have a couple initiatives that are, are, I think are really going to be key. Um, this, the first is the Skilled Trades Training Fund. It's the, it, we're in the second year that we've had this. Uh, the governor has actually proposed doubling it for next, for next year. It's a competitive grant program for employers to tap into um, to allow us, to allow them the opportunity to train their current workforce or actually um, train people for empty jobs that they have where they're having trouble filling those jobs. It requires some leveraging of resources from the employer, from community colleges, from other, other partners. Um, you know, the other important thing, and it kind of plays into what Grand Rapids Community College is doing, is the middle college um, model, where after high school, after five years of high school, somebody's exiting with a, with a, with a high school diploma, a associate's degree, or a substantial number of credits, uh, and a technical certi certification, right? So they can go in, right into the workforce if they so choose, or they can take those credits and pursue a four-year degree. So it, it's a great model, it's a great way to expose um, kids to potential opportunities in high growth and high demand areas. Mm -hmm. David, this has been a particularly um, difficult, uh, I guess, leaving this last recession because it wasn't uh, accompanied by the jobs coming back in the same numbers. So you've got the baby boomers dropping off. There's going to be a, a little bit of a lag there. But you've got a new employee that you have to have coming in underneath. The manufacturing job is not the same manufacturing job. No, and I, I think it's important for people to recognize that we're moving from a, an industrial economy to a knowledge-based economy. So that industrial economy, you know, there were jobs for essentially every skill set that was available that was out there. Today, with the knowledge economy, it requires a different level of skill set. And when I talk about the industrial economy, first and foremost, it was more of the mechanical, the hydraulic, and the mass production type environment that we were operating in our factories. Today, with the knowledge base, you know, we, we need that, that level of worker that's in between that high school level as well as that four-year degree level type of associate that Stephanie and Bill were, were talking about earlier. So we're trying to identify what are the needs that we have, not only today, but also forecasting those of the future, so that we can then partner with the different universities, whether they be the technical schools, the vocational, and vocational schools, the community colleges, or, the, or the, the higher ed universities, in regards to what do we need? Because it's not just you know, the, the work of the skilled trades itself, it's also the highly skilled workers, the engineers that are in demand. And we're in the engineering and manufacturing business. We need engineers to design, develop, and validate our products, but we also need those same engineers to run our factories. And those factories are becoming much more automated, much more sophisticated, computer-controlled machines, full of robotics. It's a high-tech environment that, that most people aren't familiar with. They think of the old industrial ways of the dark days, uh, the heated, beat it, ship it type manufacturing approach. It's the furthest thing from that today in the manufacturing environment. So again, we're only as good as our people. And those people are, are, are the ones that, that build that product every day in, in production while also taking care of that equipment from a skilled trade standpoint. And you know, so we're working with mechanical type classifications, electrical classifications, uh, machine repairman type classifications, and that's really what we need in order to sustain and grow our business moving forward and ultimately bring jobs and strengthen the economy here in Michigan. Yeah, and so there's I, a cultural pr problem here we have in this people not understanding yeah, yeah. what's available to them. Um, and we have, uh, you saw oh, the highlight of one of the micro videos. We have a series of those that we're gonna be uh, launching later today um, that really show that manufacturing is a very different environment than it used to be. And I can assure the audience, he didn't use the word excrement in any of the videos. So they are available for viewing to your youngest child as your oldest child. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've had my fill of that, actually. <laughs> Pretty yeah. good. Um, let's talk a little bit about certificate programs, because the, the, the associate's degree is important. It protects those credits. It moves on to four year if you want it. But certificate programs get to the nub of it pretty quickly. Uh, and one of the things about that, Chris, is that as you start looking at certificate programs, so uh, we talk about those being what we call stackable. So that if we have students that come into our program, to our uh, one of our certificates, I want that certificate to be stackable to where as they attain that certificate, they now have option that if that's a certificate that they, they're going to walk out our door and be able to up the ante as far as their hiring is concerned, mm -hmm. great. But I want it to be stackable that in case they want to come back and ask the question, so what would it take to get that associate's degree? 
that certificate is stackable in that it will apply to that associates. It's built right in to where all they need to do now is continue that progress toward the associates without having to start over at some other level. No, let's make sure that those certificates as much as possible are stackable so that we can stack in a, a degree on top of there. In some cases, there's another certificate that gets stacked on top of there before it gets to the degree. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure, and one thing that we focus on in our place is trying to make sure that those certificates can be built upon in case a student does want to come back and finish that, uh, finish that degree. They can do that. Well, I think we're finally kind of catching up with Germany and some places like that that channel people into trades and things like that. And well, so they and, have a low unemployment rate. Well, and it's important in my opinion, I, I think as we start, as I call it, lengthening the pipeline, not just strengthening it, but lengthening it to where we're starting to work yeah. with our industry partners to reach down into high school that when we go to, to a high school to recruit, it's one thing for GRCC to be there saying, come to our school. It's another thing for GRCC to be there with an industry partner saying, yeah, and if you do that, chances are we can hire you. Yeah. So that we can have more of, a, more of a pull on those students so those students can realize it's not just the higher ed institution recruiting me, they're recruiting me and I can not only have a job, I can have a well-paying job. Yeah. yeah, that's a perception issue that we gotta change. It Definitely, is. without it a is. doubt. We kind of, for too many years, oversold the baccalaureate as the yeah. cure-all, right? Yeah. Right. So we, we ignored the trades a little bit. Um, John, you, you know, David alluded to the fact that this is the new manufacturing knowledge base type person. Talk a little bit about, and, and allude to um, Ludington, if you will, oh, the yeah. precision that's involved in what you guys are doing. Yeah, just, you know, Consumers Energy is a big infrastructure company. I mean, just put in perspective, we're the second largest investor in the state of Michigan. We spend about a billion and a half every year in, here in Michigan. So the infrastructure, the, the technology has changed, and it's amazing how much responsibility we put on skilled trades. We're upgrading the Ludington Pump Storage Facility, which is just uh, south of here. Fourth largest pump storage facility in the world. We're installing the world's largest air-cooled motor, 500,000 horsepower motor. And it weighs 700 tons. Mm. Built in Japan, brought over here by barge, sat on a deck, took months to plan, took two and a half hours of engineering that day to ensure that the pick, pick, the lift was right. We have two tandem cranes, 400 tons each, that lifted that unit, and the clearance was one eighth of an inch to take it from the deck down to the lake level where we had it before. The person doing that, and that unit was hundreds of millions of dollars. Skilled trade. Yeah. yeah. Sat there, and by the way, not only had the technical skill to do that, yeah. but if you've seen people that do large infrastructure, we call it the pick, where they reach and grab something, they not only do it with the technology, but a lot of them have a sticky note right on the crane to just make sure everything is right. And as you know, when you do this over Lake Michigan, you have to take into consideration the wind, the weather, and everything, because one quarter of an inch clearance from that unit, and Weighed this, I mean, the, the weight of that thing was three locomotives. That's how heavy it was. And it was the size of, girth-wise, of one of the great redwoods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they moved it across that and down several mm -hmm. hundred feet with one H clearance. That's the kind of trust we put in skill. Yeah. Uh, you know, as Dave was saying, we need engineers. We need the STEM program. That's why we're su supporting FIRST Robotics. But the people that do the work, Absolutely. it was that guy in the crane, the two cranes that yeah. made that thing work. Eighth of an inch. <laughs> That's a lot. I don't have that kind of clearance when I shave. <laughs> yeah. Bill, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, buy-in from, from corporate and from, from the uh, uh, business world. Because we sit here and we all know all, all three of these components need to be working together to tackle this issue. Do you get corporate buy-in? Definitely. When I talk about programs like AMP, uh, that's only one of many because one thing that we focus on as many of our uh, uh, community college partners across the state as well, and that is not only the idea of what does a degree, what does a certificate, an academic certificate look like, but also what does the non-credit side look like? What is what do some of the customized training opportunities, um, some of those workforce training things that we can do that may not necessarily be tied to an academic degree, but are indeed providing what these guys need and saying, can you, can you give us this level of, of training and we need it to look this way. We can create that in a way that is customized to what they need so that it is relevant to their company and at some point be able to still build that 
in a, in a, uh, in a, in a way to work it toward a, an academic uh, credential as well. But the, the buy-in that we get from our business and community partners is tremendous. It's one of the things that, in my opinion, for me, attracted me to GRCC and to West Michigan is to see the level of partnership that does happen between the community college, the four-year schools, as well as industry to make sure that we're addressing this issue of, of a talent pipeline. I think it's, um, it's like I haven't seen in other places I've been. And, and that's, that's extremely important. Due to the fact that we got started late, Stephanie, you're not being fired from the panel, but you do have to go. And so we're going to excuse you. I'm sorry. I just got to note that that's your car running, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there. I'm going to do a press conference now with the governor and Mike Rowe. So excellent. Out there. Excellent. We'll give him our best. <laughs> Tell him he's on the right track. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Stephanie. Appreciate it. Um, you know, you talked about this a little bit, David, and that was the uh, kind of the placemaking piece of it. The, cultural fitting, you know, because a lot of times you get the people who have the skills, you get the people who have the knowledge, the intelligence, etc. just don't add up culturally. Have you found a challenge in that at all, or what do you do to kind of help that along? No, I, I think the most important thing is empower the associates. We call our employees associates. You, you need to empower them. I mean, they're, they're talented, they have a talented skill. At the same time, there's other skills that need to be developed, and that's our job as the employer to work with the different universities, whether they be the you know, two-year community colleges or, or the, the higher ed universities. I'll give you an example. In Three Rivers, Michigan, uh, one of our largest facilities here in the U.S., we've added 1,300 jobs in the last three years. And uh, we partner with Kalamazoo Valley Community College. We partner with Great Oaks Community College uh, to ultimately identify the type of workers that we needed, get them trained appropriately, build up the right um, uh, pool of workers so we could pull them in as we needed to. And it's been a fantastic success story, not only for us, but also for, for that community and for the state of Michigan. Yeah. And that's just one example of what we're doing here in Michigan. And, and the other things in Detroit, we used to have a very large operation in Detroit. Unfortunately, we had to shut that down because it wasn't a competitive environment to do business. Um, but we wanted, we're trying to you know, redevelop a 200-acre campus in Detroit. And we made a commitment to put a $20 million advanced technology development center in there because of where advancements are going in manufacturing. Right? It, it's changing. The game has changed dramatically. And the skill set to support that has to change with it or we're going to get left behind. Because it's all about driving our competitiveness in the business so we have the jobs of the future, not only for today, but also our future workers that are the ones going through school today. Well said. Got about uh, 40 seconds each year. Let's go down. What's the one thing probably you would do or advise everybody to do to help with this challenge of talent? How would you get involved? Who would you get involved with? What initiatives would you have? Where do you want to start? I want to start with you, John. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I think everything that was said earlier today, I agree with skilled trades. I'm going to start with the skilled trades. It is a very good job, good work here in Michigan, and something people should be proud of. And I think that's, if there was one message I'd get across to people as they're coming through high school, pushing towards college bound, maybe that's not the path for you. And when you identify the type of skills that we have, that skills that are out there and the type of companies that we have to be able to make this happen, I think we need to continue to push that. Make it visible for the younger people to understand how good a life you can have in the skilled trades. And also from a community college standpoint, just like you said, Bill, try to focus on what we need to be able to go forward. And I called it earlier, don't chase the shiny penny mm -hmm. because that's the cool thing that's going on today. Go after where the jobs are. And some of them are just flat out grind, skills, come to work every single day. Yeah. And it's a good job. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'd say with uh, guys like with what John and David do in terms of what their companies do, this is significant. That idea of you talk about buy-in, Chris, that significance in terms of buy-in at the level where not only are they there saying, yes, this is what we need, but they're also helping pay for that student to, to get that degree because they understand that if I can pay for this intern, if I can pay for this, uh, this uh, student to get this degree and this training while they're working for me, then I have that, I'm all the better for, uh, for their workforce. What we see at our place is not just the 18 year old uh, fresh out of high school kid. That's one, that's only one entity. We see the 25 year old who didn't, uh, who decided this is not where I want to do what his present career is. We see the 35 year old who is a career changer. They need that, that financial support. And when you have the partnership that we have with some of our business en entities that say, we'll foot the bill because we're going to get a good employee, 
that's when we're talking that level of buy-in that you were asking about where that partnership is really in a space where, where we're doing some awesome things. Yeah. So crucial. Dave? Since our time's run out, I'll make it quick. I, I really summarize it in three Ps. Uh, first, there's the perception issue that we said. We need to change that. We need to get into the families, educate them that there's you know, great jobs in manufacturing, great jobs in the skilled trades classifications that are there. Uh, and then get into the middle schools and get into the high schools uh, as well as the universities. We need to continue to fund some of the higher ed at, at, at the university levels, but make sure their curriculum is in line with what the, the users need in the marketplace. Cool. Second P is the pipeline. We have a responsibility to put the pipeline in place and develop the talent that's going to meet not only our current needs, but our future needs going forward. And then the third is the partnership. It's how we do it and who we do it with whether it's the community colleges, whether it's the major universities, whether it's amongst us within the industry itself, we have that responsibility. So that, that'd be my answer. Excellent stuff, it really is. And if you took copious notes, somewhere in those notes is the solution to the talent problem for Michigan. And we want to thank you guys for uh, uh, being here and sharing it with us. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thank